Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about dyes, paints, and stains and when you would use each of them because they have slightly different properties. All of them work for pigmenting leather but in different situations some of them work better than others. So what I've got in front of me here is just a little collection of some of the the pigments we use in our workshop. Uh, most of the time we use water-based uh, chemicals uh, in the dyes and in the stains so whether you go for a paint, a dye, or a stain uh, will highly depend on what you want the leather product to actually be able to do. So dyes always penetrate deepest into the leather. So when you put some on the surface of it, it will go down inside of it um, and be absorbed uh, by the, the pores and just through osmosis go deeper into the piece, which will reduce the amount that it can fade over time and that kind of thing. So while dyes penetrate deepest, stains are kind of half and half. They're partially topical and they partially do get absorbed, whereas paints are almost completely surface. So if you have something that is already kind of treated or it, it has a, um, a hardened surface, um, like you've, you've done water wet hardening on it uh, and, and heat treated it, um, then paints may be the only option that you have because it won't absorb a material anymore. So if you have a, say, finished pair of boots or something like that, you may want to go for paint, um, but you definitely want to get a leather-specific uh, paint um, because leather-specific paint has a high viscosity, so it can get some penetrative, uh, penetrative value, and on top of that, it's super flexible. So, like, if you're painting a pair of boots, for example, that place where it breaks over and over in the toe box, it's going to be really important that that's able to flex over and over. That way your paint doesn't end up chipping. I've got boots that I've painted probably almost a decade ago now, and they're still breaking in that toe box and hasn't started chipping yet. I, the original paint that I used on leather was actually just an acrylic paint, and I can guarantee you that does not work. It was a terrible mistake, but uh, brands like Kova Color from Tandy and Angelus, um, they're specifically made for leather uh, so that they will stick under those high flexing kind of situations. If you've got a static piece, like something that's not going to have to bend any, uh, you're making a piece of wall art or a mask that's not really going to have to flex, you can use a stain. Now stains, because you're not actually penetrating into the leather, stains are a great way to get very specific colors. Um, with dyes, whenever it's penetrating into the leather, you have some of the base color of the leather show through. So it's really hard to get like a bright pink or a yellow out of leather because the leather itself is not actually white to begin with. It's kind of a cream color. So your, your yellow ends up looking kind of tan and your pink ends up looking kind of rust colored, you know, that kind of stuff. Whereas with the stain, because it is very much topical, as much as it does penetrate a little bit, uh, being mostly topical, you just have the color of the pigment. The downside of the stain is that it doesn't like to flex a whole lot. So it uh, kind of hardens the surface of the leather a little bit. And so if you've got something that's supposed to bend back and forth over and over and over, it can wrinkle and crack pretty bad if you're, if you're using stains. Um, the, another upside of this though, is that a little bit goes a long way. It's a little bit more expensive than dye uh, per like ounce, but uh, a, lot of the, a lot of coverage can be achieved with just a little bit of the stain. So dyes is probably where there's the most variety of types because you have dyes come in all kinds of different base chemicals. You can have water-based dye, you have oil-based dyes, you have alcohol-based dyes, and then you have kind of some combination situations of like an oil-based pigment and an alcohol-based chemical, which is a little confusing, but it has its own properties as well. Uh, most of the time what we end up using in our workshop is water-based dyes. Um, just because of the, the type of pigment um, finished product you get from a water-based dye is typically different than the other ones. Uh, Alcohol-based dyes have these like pop kind of colors, like they're really bright, really vibrant, which can be very beneficial in certain applications. But most of the time we're making costuming and stuff that's supposed to look like it's been lived in, you know. And so if you've got like this pop green, uh, it just doesn't look like an actual ranger that should be out in the woods being hit with the sun all the time if it's like a clown color kind of deal. Um, so we, we stay away from a lot of the alcohol-based stuff. The exception I usually make in that is in the black, because almost any time you're making black, you want it to be black, black. 
So if you have a alcohol-based black, it is super dark, like void black. Whereas if you use like a water-based black, it comes out almost a little bit more like charcoal. Of course, then again, if you're trying to be, you know, making a costume for a, a soldier that's been out, you know, deployed for the last decade fighting the goblin hordes, then yeah, he's going to be having more of a weathered outfit. So you might want to go with the coal black. So different, different um, chemical types for uh, different applications. Um, in between the water base and the alcohol base, uh, you can get an oil base, uh, which has its own benefits and drawbacks. Um, the oil base makes it a little hard to do kind of like water molding type stuff because it's, it's not actually water, it's, it's oil. Um, so if you're using your dye to do like the burnishing on the edges uh, or to try and give it a little bit of shape, uh, the oil based stuff isn't going to do that very well. Uh, also, if you want a vibrant color, the oil-based stuff isn't for you. The oil-based stuff seems to come out a little stone-washed, you know, like faded in the sun kind of deal, uh, which if that's the look you're going for, then it's great. It does have the uh, the be added benefit of uh, adding some degree of oil to the workpiece. So if you're, you're re-dyeing something that is seeing the sun and seeing the water, you know, rain, um, then using an oil-based uh, dye will be less harsh on the material. Uh, so for rehabilitating leather products, uh, oil base is usually pretty good to use. Uh, one of the, the confusing hybrid stuff is the uh, Phoebe's Pro dye. It is actually a oil based pigment in an alcohol compound. So as I'm, I'm pretty confused about that myself currently, but uh, I know the colors come out a lot more favorably to me. Cause like I said, I don't really like those like bright poppy kind of colors and the pro dye has a little more of a fade look. So I, I tend to like the, the pro dye um, blues and greens and reds more than I like the Phoebe's alcohol based dye uh, just because it looks like it's been lived in a little, a little bit. Uh, it's a rich color, but not so much like a bright color. Um, I hope this has been kind of helpful for you. Um, most of the time you kind of get a feel for this stuff just by trial and error and kind of uh, getting to experiment with them a little bit. I highly recommend trying a variety of them because uh, as many people I've talked to about this, everybody seems to kind of like their own uh, from their own brands and, and what have you. But uh, you'll be seeing us use a, a variety of, of all of these in our upcoming videos, which if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, we'll be doing a collection of them to impart some more uh, leatherworking knowledge on you. So be sure to like and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you next time.